Hello, welcome to Republican Roundtable. I'm your host, Jennifer Zielinski. We are well into the 2023 Minnesota Legislative Session, and the Minnesota Democrats are running away with some crazy policies. Here to talk about this today is friend of the show and now Senator Eric Lucero. Feels great to say that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good to see you and good to be back. Yeah, welcome back to the show. How has it been going? It's uh, been very frustrating. It's uh, um, amazing what's happening to the state of Minnesota under this Democrat majority trifecta, as mm -hmm. uh, it's been called in, in state government. Eric, tell us about yourself. Um, you have, were you previously a representative and you just won your election as senator. Yeah, so I've had the, the privilege of serving as state representative for the last eight years. Uh, I was first elected in 2014, began serving in 2015, and then eight years. And this past election, I was uh, elected to senator. So a new, new uh, district after redistricting. So half the district is new to me. Uh, after redistricting, most of my uh, house district is almost remained identical. <laughs> and so, but it is an honor to be serving in this new capacity, continuing to fight for the values and priorities of, of the community that I represent. That's Which awesome. I should actually say <laughs> uh, is Albertville, St. Michael uh, area, but uh, also includes Otsego, Elk River, now then, Western Oak Grove, Rockford Township, and uh, Hanover are the eight municipalities that I, I have. So kind of those western suburb areas. Just outside the seven county metro area for the most part. Mm -hmm. A little bit of, of Hennepin, just a sliver of Hennepin County and a sliver of Anoka County. Yep. Yep. It's a great district too. I like that area. Yes. Uh, we've seen, as I called them, the runaway Minnesota Democrats. Uh, they just pushed through an abortion bill. Like it just went through as fast as possible. We've seen that faster than any other bill previously in my experience. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, the reality is uh, the, the Minnesota Senate is 34 Democrats to 33 Republicans. It is as slim a majority as you can get. And so that means approximately 49% Republicans and 51% Democrats. Mm -hmm. But they are governing as if they have some kind of totalitarian mandate that they, they have the uh, uh, mandate to shove through any and all extreme left-wing policies. And that's what they're doing. Among them is the bill that the very first bill senate file one house file one that they already rammed through and governor wall signed into law mm -hmm. now it is being characterized as the abortion bill mm -hmm. but it is not accurate to say that it is an abortion bill okay. well well it is that it's much more than that it's actually the most accurate way to say it is reproductive services mm -hmm. because there's a, a long list of the definition of reproductive services and among it is abortion but there's any and everything that's also related to reproduction and it's not limited to women, it's also men. And it's not limited to just adults, it's also limited, or, or includes minors. Mm -hmm. So boys and girls. And so, it, it, yeah, it's it's a very extreme bill. Mm -hmm. Republicans, we offered uh, north of 60 amendments to, to this bill, and they were all rejected. And I saw that. I mean, it was about care of the baby, care of, you know, everything. How can we ease this and also, it sounds packaged nice when you call it reproductive bill, but what's really going on with this bill that we should be worried about? Well, the reality is it allows for abortion all the way to the millisecond of birth. Mm -hmm. And so a, a baby could be in the process of being born, partially born, and they can still terminate the life of this innocent, fully viable child. But when it comes to boys, obviously boys don't give birth, Mm -hmm. and, but but reproductive services is included in that. And so it could be sterilization. And that's actually uh, listed in the definition there. And so there could be a minor boy, 13, 14 years old, who decides to go get themselves sterilized, and uh, there is no parental notification or consent. And so the reason that we offered amendments is because this is, you cannot get any more extreme. In fact, this puts us on par, Minnesota on par, now that this law has been signed into law, it, we are equal to China and North Korea. And we have children making decisions, long-term permanent decisions about reproductive health. They can't even buy cigarettes and alcohol at that point or That's right. you know, leave school or serve in the military, but they can make permanent life-changing decisions. That's right. All across Minnesota statute, mm -hmm. we recognize that minors don't have the same capacity as adults. You mm -hmm. need to have life experience to understand the full consequences of one's decisions. Minnesota statute, we prohibit 
uh, minors from in entering into legally binding contracts. That's mm -hmm. not leases, buying and selling of real estate, any contract. You mm -hmm. can't, a minor can't do that. They can't, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, purchase tobacco, can't purchase alcohol. We don't allow them to get their ears pierced, tattoos, or go into mm -hmm. tanning salons without parental permission. Now, why is this? Because each of those decisions has consequences. But certainly, sterilization and other hormones, drugs, whatever they want to do, have lifelong consequences. Mm -hmm. But yet, Democrats rejected all Republican reasonable uh, amendments that would have brought some semblance of common sense. All of it was rejected. Yep, I saw that after one after another just kept, kept getting rejected. Um, we're also now entering into energy and electric vehicles. It sounds like just another crazy ideas they want to push forward. And yeah. um, you're very familiar with the energy uh, issue we have going on. In fact, that's one of the committees I sit mm -hmm. on. So the three committees I'm a, 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 a member of are the Senate Energy Committee, the Senate uh, K through 12 Education Finance Committee, mm -hmm. and the Senate Housing Committee. Okay. And so as a member of the Energy Committee, electric vehicles, uh, not just electric vehicles, electric everything, mm -hmm. is one of the priorities of the Democrats. Now, what is this on, based on? It's based on a premise that human activity is altering the Earth's climate. Yep. That's what they, that's the foundation of their belief. And when I ask this question, I've asked it several times when I was in the House, on the floor. I've asked it in the Senate now, in committee. I asked the chief author, uh, uh, not, it actually was a testifier to the chief author's bill. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain to the, to the testifier, can you explain what kind of human activity, coal fire power plants, internal combustion engines that it were involved to warm up the earth to get us out of the ice age? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no answer, right? In fact, uh, there was an answer from one of my colleagues, Senate, Senate uh, Democrat colleagues on the committee, and said, well, Senator Lucero, we don't have uh, records of that because during the ice age, Minnesota wasn't a state. <laughs> which is an absolute absurd uh, argument for ignoring the reality that the Earth has warmed up outside of human activity, and one cannot uh, uh, isolate and say that, hey, the activity happening today or the, the whatever occurrence, I, I won't argue the Earth's climate isn't changing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely is changing. Mm -hmm. Clearly is. But when you look at thousands of years of world history, yeah. and it, it, that's the data set, and from that reality, you only pick a small fraction of time, which would be, uh, they roughly go from 1895 to the present. If you look at any and all charts that they bring, it's <laughs> 1895 to the present. And that's a sliver of time compared to the whole continuum. And we know it's changed over time, you know, even in the Middle Ages, they can show records that it has changed, yes. affecting how the Middle Ages and people lived during those times. That's right. So that's right. It's not just gas. It's not just one little thing that's affecting the climate. That's right. So, so based on that premise, then mm -hmm. they have entered into an entire initiative to to turn all of society on its head. They mm -hmm. want to move everything away from what what they say fossil fuels, mm -hmm. whether whether that just be internal combustion engines, coal fire power plants, but it also includes uh, everything chainsaws. Uh, leaf blowers. I heard. I just heard on the radio today. Zambonis. I guess is oh, another one. That's a Minnesota like insult yeah, exactly. right there. <laughs> Absolutely. And so any and everything. Mm. They want to go to electric. Now uh, that is just not going to work. And they want to move us all away from all of that and rely on windmills and solar power uh, uh, to power everything. Mm. And it's just the reality is that's not going to happen. It's not possible to power Minnesota on solar panels and windmills. Take the state. I mean, right now we're in the middle of winter and, you know, per the groundhog, we're going to see six more weeks. So yeah, are exactly. we going to see a lot of solar or days where it's really sunny out? That's right. Well, we fully expect it is absolutely going to result in rolling blackouts. Mm -hmm. California is leading the charge on this electric push. And we are seeing right now they are going through blackouts and brownouts right now. That's coming to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. But even before then, the Star Tribune, for example, just recently, unfortunately, was after this new energy bill was passed, the 100% carbon free by 2040 bill was passed. Then the Star Tribune published an article that uh, spoke about the billions of dollars it's going to take 
to make this change. And those billions yeah. of dollars are going to be passed on to ratepayers. It, it's just going to change everyone's way of life, and we're not prepared for that. I don't mm -hmm. think voters realize what is coming down the line. Voters absolutely did not mm. vote for the extreme policies across the board that the Democrats are, are pushing. Moreover, mm -hmm. they also did not vote for a complete rejection of Republican ideas. Mm -hmm. And so with a, again, I, I mentioned a 34 to 33 split in the Senate, 49 to 51%. That does not mean that Republicans have no voice. Mm -hmm. There's 49% of Minnesota that Senate Democrats are absolutely rejecting. That is not reasonable. It is not fair. It is not what the results of the elections uh, stated. And yet Democrats do not care. And we have some really close districts too from what I've heard is that what I think we're gonna see from the reproductive bill, from this energy bill, this might change how Minnesota looks, hopefully in 2024 and moving on after that. It is going to be all of these policies are, are, are being passed in such a short period of time mm -hmm. with little discussion in committee. They're ramming these things through committee. They're rejecting all amendments. Uh, and the result is all these policies are being passed at the same time mm -hmm. in one session. And they're going to compound themselves and the effects are going to be amazingly expensive. The hardship is going to be very real to people across the, the socioeconomic spectrum, mm -hmm. but especially those at the bottom when things are already expensive are gonna become way more expensive. Now, just to finish the conversation on the electric uh, uh, push, they continue. Yes. One of the things I brought up just as of today in committee was uh, the, the totality of the continuum from start to finish of the electric vehicle in this case. It's not just the purchase of the vehicle to the, the end of useful life of a vehicle. There's a lot more that goes in, in to, to the manufacture, to the shipping, to mm -hmm. the mining of the minerals that go into the batteries that lead up to just the purchase. And then afterwards you have uh, the disposal and all that. And, and, and both of those other ends of the continuum involve fossil fuels and or uh, labor in other countries that don't have the same safety protocols that we do here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. But one of the safety factors when it comes to the operation of a vehicle is when these electric vehicles suffer a fire from maybe a crash or whatever might happen. Mm -hmm. There are many articles that, that uh, are, are talking about this, and I asked the chief author of a bill that is seeking to continue the expansion of electric uh, vehicles in Minnesota. Is she concerned about the safety factors when it comes to fire suppression and emergency response? She said on Monday she has never heard of that, doesn't know anything about it, and uh, I, was, I was truly shocked because this, this material is something that the, the chiefs of, uh, the fire chiefs have been speaking of. I've, I've spoken to many on this topic. Mm -hmm. And so I brought in committee then, the next time we met, articles that speak about this. And it speaks about a vehicle for 30 days. It could start back on fire. It has to be isolated within 50 feet, uh, 50 feet uh, radius of the vehicle for, because if it does start on fire where it's being stored after a crash, yeah. it can start other vehicles on fire. And again, it takes many, many more gallons of water to suppress these things. And again, this is a huge, just one factor that's not being considered mm -hmm. in this push. It's going to have downstream impacts on all the municipalities that have, obviously, fire uh, departments. Mm -hmm. How do you have to account for more equipment, storage of these things, transportation of these things, and it's just one small item that's going to be very costly for Minnesotans. And even training in how to control these fires and how to separate these vehicles. I mean, it's not going to be a facility miles away from a metropolitan area. We, the Twin Cities is huge. Mm -hmm. That could be out in your district or further that's right. out. So that's right. It should be concerning to anyone who lives in a metro area. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But the chief author of this particular bill had never even heard of it, mm. yet is crafting legislation that's going to put brand new mandates on all of Minnesota and even compound the the bills that each and every one of us, one of us are going to have to pay for. And again, we see that runaway legislation where they're just not considering the consequences. That's right. That's right. So. Yep. And we, you know, one thing about electric vehicles, we don't have the grid for them at this point. Uh, we just we we have we don't have that set up yet. Even Elon Musk has said we don't have that ability to support everyone having an electric vehicle. That's right. So whether it be, as I mentioned, it's not just electric vehicles, it's uh, all small engines. So boating. In fact, mm -hmm. the bill that we heard uh, in committee includes aircraft, 
It includes uh, small engines of chainsaws and leaf blowers. If all this stuff is electric, we don't have the infrastructure to support it. Mm -hmm. We don't have the infrastructure, uh, and there aren't enough windmills and solar oh, panels that no. are going to produce the electricity, let alone transmit the electricity, let alone store the electricity when there isn't any wind blowing, mm -hmm. when there isn't any sun shining, mm -hmm. and then to charge all these things. Uh, you know, in fact, I had an experience. I had a brother-in-law uh, several years ago when the, I think it was the Chevy Volt had first come out, the first year. Mm -hmm. He bought that. He was staying with me for a few months at that time, and he was plugging it into my 20-amp standard outlet in my garage to mm -hmm. charge it overnight. Mm -hmm. And it melted the outlet. It literally melted the outlet over time. <laughs> and it was probably a period of maybe two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. And so the infrastructure to charge these things is also going to have to change in people's residential homes. Yes. There's yes. so much involved with this. Mm -hmm. And yet they don't, Democrats do not care <laughs> how much has to happen to to achieve their utopian carbon-free goal. And I think, you know, moving towards electric or alternative energy, we both want to see, we all, both sides want to see that. You know, we want to move towards sources, multiple sources. And in my view, it's capitalism having, you know, I can buy an electric vehicle, I can buy a gas combustible vehicle, I can buy, you know, something else, whatever happens to totally, be there. Totally, totally. But we, we can't just push it through without going safely. And I think that's key. Yes. Capitalism is key. I have no objection to mm -hmm. electric If somebody wants to buy an electric vehicle, an electric lawnmower, whatever. Yes. Totally fine. I, I am with you if you want to do that. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is the government is incentivizing people through a myriad of taxpayer funded programs, mm -hmm. whether it be uh, tax credits, which is one of the proposals we've heard in committee, whether it be subsidies of, of all kinds, uh, it, the variants are many, but it comes down to taxpayer dollars are using to incentivize people through all these rebates and credits and programs, mm -hmm. and that is not the free market. It no. is the It is taxpayers funding this Democrat uh, push. Yes, and you know, it's just scary what they're, again, they're pushing through. You sit on the Education Finance Committee, you've also seen CRT come through, as somebody who likes history, I hear CRT just on, you know, you know, the, you know, very first end, and I think, okay, that's great. Kids are going to hear more about different kinds of history, different views sure. of history. Is that what's really going on with CRT? Absolutely not. And I would start with the, the following premise. Mm -hmm. It is a universal truth that's demonstrated all throughout human history, whether it be people, organizations, families, communities, whatever, mm -hmm. and that's the following. Un, uh, uh, unity brings strength. Division brings weakness. Yep. And so even in our Pledge of Allegiance, we recognize that we are one nation under God. Our coins, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. Yes. What do all these things mean? When we are united, united states, we are strong. Yes. What's happening under this poisonous, CRT push is to divide. It's to highlight differences between people. It is to generate feelings of anger mm -hmm. and hostility and suspicion. All of these things create division. Division equals weakness. And I'm very concerned about the poison that Democrats want to continue to pump into the minds of our young people. Mm -hmm. So here I have uh, before us just one such bill. Mm -hmm. So this is Senate File 619. Okay. This was heard uh, I this week in the Education Finance Committee, here's the definition of ethnic studies curriculum. <laughs> Means the critical and interdisciplinary study of race, ethnicity, ingentity, in in with a focus on the experiences and perspectives of people of color with and beyond the United States. Ethnic studies analyzes the ways in which race and racism have been and continue to be powerful social Cultural, cultural and political forces. Okay, race and racism have been and continue to be. See, that is a poison mm -hmm. that's being pumped into their heads. But it goes on. It says gender, class, sexual orientation, gender identity, and legal status. These people, and this is the definition of ethnic studies. You know, so I'm a Hispanic. Mm -hmm. My wife is East Indian from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. My sister married somebody from Kenya. 
and my brother married a minority. <laughs> so my entire family is a, the, a great example <laughs> of a beautiful picture of ethnic, religious, and, and uh, racial diversity. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I love my family for that. Ethnic studies has nothing to do with gender or no. class. <laughs> has nothing to do with it. Uh, gender identity, legal status. Legal status, illegal immigrants. My legal status is nothing to do with my ethnicity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yet, but see, what they're doing here is they're trying to drum up division between all of these different groups and then have been and continue to be. That is incredibly dangerous for our young people to believe that they are the product of racism, that there's active forces working against them, mm -hmm. and it creates a mindset that they can't achieve, they can't go after their dreams, and that is something that's going to create anger and division. And it's that victim mentality, and unfortunately that victim mentality can just, it can hold kids back. And We don't want that. We want them to achieve, to be the greatest in whatever they want to achieve, you know, whether they want to be president, whether, whether they want to work for a company or become a lawyer or a doctor. That's right. We don't want them to have that constant victim mentality, That's which right. this can create. 100%. Mm -hmm. In committee, I emphasize, carpe diem, seize the day. Go after your dreams. Mm -hmm. Do not allow yourself to have a mindset that I am a victim. Instead, have a mindset of, I'm an overcomer. I'm empowered to chase my dreams and I can succeed. Yep. Now there will be uh, there will be hardships. Mm -hmm. There will certainly be struggles. There will be things that have to overcome. That's life. Mm -hmm. But regardless of that, which by the way is the 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 norm throughout human history, every single one of, of us throughout human history, all humans have had to overcome adversaries in all shapes, sizes, and forms. And so, if somebody encounters resistance in their life, don't be a victim. Be an overcomer and don't allow those to be hurdles in your life. That's what we should be teaching our young people. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, exactly what we should be. Go for it in school. Do as much as you possibly can, whether 100%. it's in sports, education. Just push yourself. You're, it's that's right. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for everybody. That's right. It wasn't easy for you to become a senator. You had to work for it. But here you are, probably, you know, one of the highest offices in Minnesota, really serving the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's my concern because the rest of the, as we continue to push this kind of garbage mm -hmm. into the, the curriculum mandates that are going to be taught to our K-12 students, you know what the rest of the world is doing? They're focused on math, they're focused on reading, they're focused on all kinds of things that are actually going to matter in life, mm -hmm. and that's why Minnesota and the United States continues to fall further and further behind our peers across the world. It's scary. Totally. Um, Senator Lucero, as we're wrapping up here, uh, what can the average voter or citizen do? Um, you know, sometimes they hear all this doom and gloom and they're like, it's not going to change or can I do something? What can the average person do? Well, human history also demonstrates that change can and does happen, but mm -hmm. that requires people to get involved. Mm -hmm. So one of the analogies that I like to use is as somebody who is overweight, who's been way more overweight than I am now, mm -hmm. When I get to a point in my life I, it, that I recognize, hey, I'm overweight, mm -hmm. I look in the mirror, I can't say, you know what, I want uh, a change, I'm, I don't like this state of being overweight, I demand change now. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen because I got to a state of being overweight one scoop of ice cream at a time over a period of days, weeks, months, and years, right? Yes. I can't expect that it may have taken me years to get here that I'm going to do it overnight. I have to roll it back and it's going to take just as much time. The same thing is when it comes to these culture wars that we're in. Unfortunately, there are way too many people that share our worldview and our values that have not been engaged in the process, they've not been involved, and this is what's happened is, because good people have done nothing, evil has advanced. And now we see it. <laughs> so, so people who are waking up and are frustrated over these the, the reproductive health bill that passed, the energy mandate bill, all this other crap that's coming down, you can't expect that one election cycle is going to solve this. Mm -hmm. This is going to require people to fight, to be involved, to uh, go and, and stand up for the values that they, they believe in. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to change this thing. By the way, 
get involved at the local level because I would actually say that the local levels so of townships, city councils, school boards, and county boards have way more impact on each and every one of our day-to-day -day lives than state and federal government does. Absolutely. I think sometimes we look at the federal level, who's in Congress, you know, who's president, but we're like, we don't realize how much the state and local level really affect us. As somebody who just moved out of Minneapolis, I moved out of a city that changed policies and just I knew I had to get away from that. Mm -hmm. But now I'm involved at my local city level as well. Awesome. So it's just something that anybody can do. Just That's right. see who your city council is. That's right. That's right. And start fighting for them. Start getting involved door knocking, yes. voter identification, uh, and helping. All of those efforts are going to help change these policies, how we've gotten here today. Mm -hmm. How can our viewers reach you if they need to, or how can they see uh, more of what you discuss every day? Totally. So I'm very active on social media. Mm -hmm. So I try to put up things, whether it be activities at the Capitol, whether it be uh, other things that I'm doing. So I am on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to look me up there, Eric Lucero, MN. I am on Twitter. Uh, my uh, web uh, website is ericlucero.com. Okay. I encourage people to go there and or look me up at the Capitol. I have a Capitol member page. They can email me through that. And I definitely want to hear from everybody because whether or not they're my constituent, mm -hmm. because I'm fighting for the values, the constitutional uh, values that made our country and our state so great. Regardless of where a person lives, we know that the Constitution is, is what allowed uh, our republic to empower people to become the most successful people in the world. We are the envy of the world, but we won't continue to be that if, we, if, if Democrats continue to push garbage that's going to tear our entire society down. Absolutely. I love your videos on Facebook. You explain bills so well, and I'm like, this is just perfect for anybody wanting to learn about them. Well, thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Senator Absolutely. Lucero, for coming Always on the show. Absolutely. Always a Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Republican Roundtable. Again, I'm Jennifer Zielinski. Have a great day.